Hello, friends and listeners from all across the globe. Thank you so much for tuning back in to another episode of The Yogi Show. Today, we have a special bonus edition of The Yogi Show, a midweek drop here for episode number eight with Mr. Sridhar Silberfine, the creator of Bhakti Fest. Bhakti Fest is an incredible kirtan and yoga festival in the desert of California. This episode is all about being of service, creating community, and connecting with like-minded individuals. We had an amazing time connecting with Sridhar and are so grateful he took the time just a few weeks out from this year's fest to share his story and inspire us to want to serve the world. Enjoy this conversation, my friends. We will see you on the other side. Okay, friends, thank you so much for tuning back in. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sridhar Silberfine. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a beautiful day out here in Southern California. Oh, man, I don't know anything. All I know is about heat and humidity in South Florida these days. That's all I know about right now. No, you got to jump in the water. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That's 100% accurate. What's up, Yogi Brian? How are you tonight, brother? How is it going? It's going. How is it going? I need to jump in the water, too. I'm in Phoenix. It's just too hot here. Scorcher. So. Scorcher. What's it like in Joshua Tree right now, Shudar? It's, uh, it's a nice, cool day. It's around 85 degrees. Mm, sounds uh, sounds like a good time, you know. What what about at nighttime though? Is it like drop dramatically at night? Yeah, it's in the high sixties, and uh, daytime it can get hot. You know, some days we have in the nineties, and some days over a hundred. Yeah, yeah. In uh, in South Florida, I don't know the last time I saw anything like under ninety after nine a.m. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, especially difficult during our building process, which we're in now. Uh -huh. um, the, the heat takes a little bit more toll on everybody. Oh, I bet. I bet for sure, for sure. So, uh, so Sridhar is the, uh, obviously you guys heard there on the intro, is the creator of Bhakti Fest that's been going on uh, for going on 11 years now. Is that right? Is this the 11th? It's the 11th year. And uh, we have a sister uh, show called Shakti Fest. Yes. And that's, yeah, is that that's, women only? No, no, no. That, that uh, I created it because I wanted to, give more presence to the divine feminine. I wanted women to be able to come out and have a voice in yoga and in kirtan and in workshops. And that's the reason why I, I created that two years after the Bhakti Fest. Oh, okay. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Um, as a, so I, I run a yoga festival in South Florida with my friend Kelly uh, Brookbank, and it's uh, we call it Yoga Fest FL, and we're going on, I think this is nine years for us, oh, um, doing a, a one-day nonprofit yoga festival that um, supports uh, teen empowerment and student retreats that we take to Costa Rica for a life-changing retreat um, every summer. So that's what we raise money for for our festival. But I don't know how you string together three, five, four or five days like you do. I, I don't know how you do it. And I'm curious to hear, you know, we'll get into that in a bit. I'm curious to hear about it because uh, like <laughs> one day is enough to like just make me lose my marbles planning for like a whole year. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know how you do it, you know, but I'd love to start the I'd love to start the call off with like, um, you know, your introduction to spirituality, kirtan, and yoga, and like where that jump off was, because back in the day, there wasn't like a, a yoga studio on every corner like there is by a Starbucks nowadays, you know, it was much different back then. So can you give us a little insight on like your journey to spirituality and yoga um, from the jump? Well, started in the 60s, actually, uh, when I had my first teacher in New York City, I met my meditation teacher who, by the name of Rudy. Uh, he had an uh, antique uh, store down in uh, Lower Manhattan, and he was the largest importer of Oriental arts and antiques in America, but he also happened to be a very powerful meditation teacher. And I just happened to uh, go there one time, and uh, through the auspices of a family member who told me, oh, you know, you seem a little lost, why don't you go see Rudy? Um because he's a very powerful teacher. So I went in there just by chance, and he was sitting on a chair, and he did eye-gazing meditation, which mm. means you in the room and, and uh, zone in on you and then transmit what's called Shaktipat. Um, mm. and very powerful. And um, in the room uh, behind him were these big, big pictures of, saints in India, 
who I didn't know anything about at that point. But I gravitated to those pictures, and I felt a lot of power coming. And oh, I had, oh wow! What is what is Shakti Pot? Shakti Pot is the ra- raising of the Kundalini. Uh, you know, and it raises up from the bottom of the uh, spine, goes right up the back of the spine to the top of the head. Right? And then you—I mm, never heard of that before. Thank you, you for sharing into, that. You get into an altered state, and uh, you know that's where the divine celestial music comes from, and the divine inspirations and you know visions and stuff. Beautiful. So that was kind of the introduction for you, and that was back in the '60s. Yeah, but then I left that class, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see him till uh, till um, maybe three years later when I wound up back in New York City, uh-huh. um, and then uh, and that happened through a tragic situation that I found myself in <clears throat> Spain. <clears throat> it's a story that I don't tell too often, but uh, I was in prison in Spain in the sixties. Oh shit. Whoa. Under the uh, under Fr- Francisco Franco, who was the dictator uh, of Spain, and I got into a little trouble by smuggling uh, some marijuana in those days from uh, Morocco to Spain. I got caught, and uh, I was in solitary confinement for sixteen days with no shower, no bathroom. <sighs> no nothing. Can't imagine. Can't and, imagine. Uh, wow. And I. Uh, was being eaten up by uh, bugs. And my whole body was oh like scratched raw. And I was just about ready to actually to die at that moment. But then I remembered those pictures in that classroom of Rudy's, right? And uh, I said, oh, okay. My name is Stephen back then. Um, I said, okay, you're either going to go deep in inside and go find a meditative space or you're going to scratch yourself and You'll, you'll die. I mean, oh, you'll, gosh. You'll, so I, I went to that space and that pulled me through that whole thing. I eventually got out. It was a long story about escaping and co- it's a midnight express. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very exciting story, but you know, we need a little time for that. One. But <clears throat> I wound up coming back to the States and getting into the real estate business in New York City and uh, meeting my. Uh, my yoga guru, who was by the name of Swami Satchidananda, <clears throat> he okay. came to the America around '67, uh, sponsored by Peter Max, the famous uh, artist and painter. And uh, that's how I met Peter, and that's how I met Swami, and I became one of his top yoga teachers in New York at 500 West End Avenue. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and I was also do- by day in the real estate business, and by night I would go go practice and teach yoga. And this would be every, every night. And then uh, Swami says, why don't you uh, try to get uh, some yoga into the universities or colleges? And I said, well, that's going to be a hard call. For the yeah. <laughs> In the 60s, yeah. Was, I didn't, nobody yeah. was doing that. Right? <laughs> well, I actually contacted Livingston College, which was a division of Rutgers, uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, I think it was. And they said, come on in. And I came in and uh, I made a very long uh, paper. I I wrote a beautiful uh, dissertation on yoga. They accepted that and they gave me a four-credit course once a week. Boom. Uh, So I would take the train out. I would leave my uh, real estate office with my whites in my pocket. In my in my, a little bag that I would carry, you know, take the train. Some of my students would pick me up. I would get to the uh, college. I would change into my whites, top and bottom, and I yeah. would give it. I would give a two-hour class. It was yoga, it was meditation, and it was philosophy. And how was, many people? In that chunk, oh, I had 40, 50 people come. Oh, wow, that's, that's a good turnout. Yeah, that's, that's good turnout good back turnout. then. And uh, then I would just. They would drop me off at the train station. I would come back. <laughs> That's like the, the Polar Express yogi. Yeah, it was every Wednesday. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, through that, more things came together. See, at that time, and, and I still feel a lot about this particular thing uh, that I adopted, is when you do things from passion, you're much better off than doing things for money. No doubt. 
Okay. So like say if people want to become a photographer, a videographer, or a yoga teacher, or a kirtan, I tell them, and, you know, I do a lot of mentoring. I have some really sweet mentoring programs I do for people for free. Um, so I tell them, you know, do something like this for passion. You know, there's so mm-hmm. many yoga teachers and so many kirtan wallers and, you know, this, but there's very little money to go around for everybody. So right. nobody's really getting rich in this area and people shouldn't approach it from that place. They right. should approach it that I'm enhancing my passion and I want to reach as many people as possible. I want to give of myself. Basically I want to serve. I want to serve humanity and some talent that I have and I'm not looking for anything in return. I I'm love that. Doing, yeah, I'm not doing it to make money because I have my day job, which is funny because I tell people don't leave your day job. Just, you know, practice this and give it out to everybody. Right, exactly. If we quit our day job to do the, to do this Yogi Show podcast, we'd be uh, we might be living at your house in uh, Joshua yeah. Tree. <laughs> You're most welcome. But you got an extra room? Yes, I, I have a lot of rooms actually. And we, have, <laughs> we actually have we actually house anywhere from ten to thirty people for at least two to three weeks, which is happening right now. And right. we have a, we have a full time cook, and we take care of everybody. And these are the guys that and guys and gals that are setting up the program and getting it all together. But, How amazing. But, yeah. But the, uh, so I realized at an early age that I didn't really want to make money from my passion, right? And at the same time, I really wanted to spend time with people that were higher than me and deeper than me. And that's, I said, why hang out with people that don't, don't know anything? Hang out with people. If you're going to have the time to hang out, hang out with people that know a lot of spiritual wisdom. Yes. So that brought me to Allen Ginsberg and to Ram Dass and Timothy Leary and to Salvador Dali. And these were the people mm-hmm. I hung out with in the 60s. <clears throat> yep. The people that are going to add the value to your life, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, because, you know, it's, it's wonderful to have friends and everything like that, but we just go back and forth stroking each other's ego so we don't really get <laughs> we, don't get, we don't get very far yeah. right right you know yeah I, I was watching some of your interviews on youtube and one thing that really was prominent was humility like you talked a lot about humility and service and just like that ego humility and especially these days you know social media and just it's it's hard to well, well I, I'll say for me it's hard to balance like the ego and humility and service yeah, exactly and that's why I don't do social media because it's so it's so difficult to for that balance um, and you know spirituality it, the spiritual ego is a very difficult place because it's even worse than the regular ego right because you think you know something. <laughs> So uh, everybody gets caught in that trap. You know, you take some yoga classes, you meet some people, this and that. I think that the most important thing is in, on a spiritual path for me is spending time with these masters and these great teachers because they imparted humility to me. They imparted, you know, s- service work, which I call savor, and uh, very important stuff. And uh, you only can get it from a, a spiritual teacher a wise man or, or, or woman. What's your, um, yeah, that, that is so true in terms of a teacher. And these days there's teachers everywhere. I mean, it, it seems like, you know, with social media, there's so many teachers, like what, how would, how would like, especially a new yoga student or a, a new yoga teacher, like how do you find your teacher? Like your teacher. Discernment is the big mm. discernment. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Everybody out there is trying to get followers and devotees and stuff like that. And <clears throat> they're basically making a business out of it. Right? And most of them, most of them are a bunch of phonies and uh, they wound up, uh, they wind up uh, <laughs> you know, messing around with their uh, students and which is a, not a good, not a good space. And you read about it all the time. Just in this last year, you know, three or four major teachers uh, got busted for fooling yep. around with students, yep. you know? And uh, I don't want to name names, but, uh, you know, it's very prevalent because... Yeah, and you just keep people, seeing it, you know? Yeah, people are, because 
we're vulnerable because we go to a teacher and a guru for, you know, compassion and love and understanding. We don't go to the guru and teacher to get laid. You know, so right. it's, <laughs> right? That's not what it's all about. But <laughs> the negative person, like the negative teacher or guru, they seize upon those moments that they see the vulnerability in the student and they take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where and that's where discernment is so important. You have to yeah. be able to see and look and go deep and say, "Do I really want to spend my time with this person because I noticed he's looking around or he's doing this or doing that or it's just not my imagination?" You know, and that's how you have to you have to question the teacher. You have to question the guru. And, and you keep on questioning them until you're satisfied. And if you're not satisfied, you move along. Yeah. Find another teacher, you know, you find another or teacher. Not. Or not. Or you could be in a state that you don't have to. You can just, mm. yeah. very important to listen to uh, the chanting. Very important to have a daily practice of yoga and meditation. Yes. Very yeah. important to re- be reading spiritual books at night and not dwell like say with the news or TV, Not CNN. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard one because it's a very addictive space. It's addicting. It's so addicting. Right. You know, it, it is. is. Yeah. What's your favorite book? What's your like all time favorite go to? Oh, book? it's like I have so many, and I'm really a big Manly P. Hall person. H. A. L. L. He is mm-hmm. one of the great philosophers in the world, and uh, I always have a couple. You know, I collect really old books. And I always have a couple of his by my bedside. And, of course, I love reading Ram Dass, no matter. You know, I've been friends right. with Ram Dass. We've been friends since 1970. Wow. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah and, uh, and, you know, I brought, I brought him to Maui. I got him his home there. I got him to doctors. I, I set him up. I raised money for him uh, because he was having a very difficult time around 15 years ago. And, uh that's what you do. You don't, you keep on doing work and you service work for each other and you help each other out without looking for anything in return. Right. Yeah. That's it. So, that's it. Seva. You know, it's, it's service, you know, it's service. Yeah, that's that's exactly. what it's all about for sure. People, people, people have a hard time understanding that. Yeah, no, I know, I know what you mean. It's funny you said that a book about uh, about Ram, anything about Ram Das. I have the the Beer, Be Here Now book, and I I think it is a, it's on my bed. I'm looking at my bedside table because I recorded from my bedroom, and uh, there it is, like it's it's right there. So I love yeah. that. Uh, it, it you know, and I like it because you can flip open to a page, you know, and yeah. just read the page. You don't have to read the whole thing front to back, this and that. Like you can just read a page and just like think, just ponder. The energy that went into those, you know, that, and yeah, then and, soak it up. And his words are so amazingly beautiful. I mean, it's just uh, everything he says, you know, and that's what I, uh, that's how I do my interviews with him. You see, every year we do an interview. I go out to Maui <clears throat> in April. We sit down for a couple of hours. I have three cameras rolling. It's a, and if you, if you look back to the beginning, which was 2009, you'll see a big difference in both of our health and wellness. Mm-hmm. Actually. Uh, mm-hmm. But you really see a profound a change in him every year because he's getting uh, deeper and deeper into his uh, sickness and illness and stuff like that. And it's very right. hard for him. It, he's, <clears throat> he's pretty much the hardest interview uh, that I've ever had to do because uh, – I have to really work very, very deep with him. And you can see that in the interviews. Okay, we'll definitely have to link the interviews. Is it on the yeah. is it on the BhaktiFest page? Yeah, it's on the website. YouTube, on the BhaktiFest uh, okay. YouTube channel. There's 11 I'm looking years, forward to check. There's 11, 11 years, years of progression. Of interviews there, and they're really fantastic. We get into very deep, you know, contemporary spiritual uh, questions and answers. And in no holds bar, we talk about everything. We talk about his... Uh, homosexuality for many, many years and you know how he had uh, a one-night dalliance on the LSD and he had a child and the child appeared 55 years later. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he, he, he called Ram Dass and said, hey, I'm your son, right? And Ram Dass is, you know, 
he was, he's an avowed uh, homosexual, and he said that's impossible. So they did a DNA. <laughs> oh. They did a DNA, and it was his son. And so sure, he, shit, it's the son. Oh my gosh! And he became, uh, talking about rabbit hole, he, going down a rabbit right. hole, and then having a <laughs> having a kid. Wow. He became a grandfather at eighty-five years old. Holy wow. shit. Yeah, we'll definitely have to link some of this stuff in the yeah. show notes. Yeah, we're linking that up. For yeah, sure. Everybody listening, check out the show notes. It's going to be right there. You need to see that. For sure. Wow. And, and, and it's a it's wonderful opportunity to spend time with a great being before they leave their body. And that's really the way you have to look at it because, you know, we're all leaving our bodies at any time now. So yeah, this is yeah. all temporary. Mm. Yeah, the opportunity to be with one another and share space and help each other grow yeah. and be able to understand things that you might have had practiced or heard or had an experience with it. And, and that would seg- segue back to my my time with Swami Satchitananda. He was my yoga guru. And mm-hmm. uh, in 1969, I was hanging out with uh, Artie Kornfeld and Michael Lane, and uh, they were the producers of Woodstock. The Woodstock. Yeah. yeah. And they said to me one night... Uh, what do you think is missing from uh, the proposed uh, program? I said, well, you have some of the great musicians, or to be great, because a lot of them were not great yet, but they became great after that. And uh, I said, you're missing the spiritual element. And they looked at me and they said, what do you mean? I said, we need to have you know, a spiritual leader come and do the invocation. He said, okay, you handle that. You produce that. <laughs> you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you produce that yeah. segment. And I said, okay, fine. And I went back to Swami. I said, Swami, you've been invited to do the invocation at Woodstock. He said, what's Woodstock? I said, well, it's going to probably, <laughs> probably be 500,000 people. So what we did, oh we, we flew him in. I was there like a week uh, earlier, and then we flew him in by helicopter. And then uh, we had a beautiful little program in the back of the stage in the tent that we set up just to welcome him. <clears throat> then it was time for the show to begin, and the show was like three, four hours late to begin with. And uh, the first act that was going on, they got up there. This is one of the stories. They couldn't find the act. And then this act got on and they saw all these people and they got freaked out. And they ran. They freaked, stage fright. They, they ran and hid in the bushes. And so then the, uh, <laughs> the, the producers uh, started to look around. They saw Richie Havens was there. And so they grabbed Richie Havens and they brought him on stage and as he's walking on stage, I'm standing there in my whites uh, because Swami Sajidananda was going to start right after that. And I say to this uh. guy, I say to Richie Havens, I mean, you see this in the movie, and I'm going to tell you what segment it's in. I said, okay. I said to Richie Havens, hey, Richie, we don't have anyone to introduce Ram, uh, uh, Swami Sajidananda. Can you do that? He looked at me and says, get the fuck away from me, right? <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was some crazy kid. And, you know, I was. But uh, it's hilarious. You see this and, like, you know the new Netflix movie, Woodstock, that just came out around three, four weeks ago? Uh, Netflix came out with a Woodstock movie, the one that uh, uh, some guy directed and produced. It's I not, haven't seen it. Yeah, I heard about it. Oh, it's that. fantastic. It's, it's really great. It's not the original one, but it's a their version of it uh, and it's great and i'm in it in like 48 49 50 minute 51 minutes you'll see this moment that richie haven walks up and i'm standing there and i actually you see me pitching him on this you know you can't hear, nice. you can't hear me but you see me right yeah and uh, so he went he's on like, get out of here bro yeah really. <laughs> what, what are you, who the hell are you right yeah. <laughs> so uh, he went on and then uh, the Swami came on and, and the announcer announced him, Chip Monk. And, uh, and then after he finished, we just stood to the side of the stage and we looked at it, 500,000 people. And I said, wow. Swami, oh I said, Swami someday we're going to have, we're going to gather all these people and chant the divine names. And yep. he said, Oh, Srida, I hope so. It'd be so much like India. And uh, because no one ever saw crowds like that in the, in the history of America. Yeah, five hundred thousand. That's insane. Gosh, it was yeah. And uh, so then, forty years later, we segue into two thousand and nine, and that's when we had the first party. That's amazing. So he, so he, so you told him, like, did you at, did you say to him like I'm gonna do it, or he told you like no, go he, do it? 
He gave me the blessings. Okay. And that's, that's a very important point. Yeah. You know, it's very important to have blessings and grace, yes. G-R-A-C-E, in your life. This yep. is key, you know. One who develops grace from a guru or from a teacher is very, very important uh, in life because it's very hard to find. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm just, we're all just an instrument. Everything we have is, we're just an instrument because God is working through us. Yep, the divine is working through you, brother. I love that. So fast forward 40 years. Okay, so what the hell took you so long? Well, uh, in, between, <laughs> in between that time, I started the first natural food store in Southern California. And okay. Then I, and then I created a cosmetic company, and I discovered an essential oil called tea tree oil. And uh, Well, you, you discovered Yes, that? I did, and I, I started what? a company called Desert Essence which is a very big brand right now, you know? And wow. Yeah, I was hiking with the Aborigines in uh, Australia in 1978, and uh, I was with a shaman Aborigine at that point, and uh, he, we, got, we came upon a, pa- uh, a pond surrounded by trees. I didn't know what they were. He says, jump in. So I said, yeah. And I said, okay, I took my clothes off, and I jumped in, and I jumped out screaming bloody murder because... This pond was filled with tea tree oil, melaleuca alternatolia, wow. all around. And of course, I found out later on you're not supposed to have any of this kind of oil on your privates, right? Oh <laughs> shit! No, so, but then a day or two later, every cut and bruise, everything disappeared from my body. Gone. So I said, "Holy shit!" I took it and I started importing it, and I introduced it to the natural food industry and. That's how tea tree oil became so famous. Wow. I, I love that. You're like, I invented tea tree oil, no big deal. Really. Yeah, drops, I mean, it's, drops the mic like, and we, turns we around. We use it at the yoga studio all the time, right? Like, oh, yeah. Well, uh, actually, that's humility right there, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Right. Actually, it's just, if you think of everything as a big deal, then you don't go any further than that, than that big deal. You know? Wow. I love oh that gosh. you said that. Wow. Sridhar. I love that you oh said that gosh. because I'm pl- I'm used that in my life of like benchmarks of like oh when I get to this I'll have made it. Well, what the fuck happens after that then? Nothing. Yeah. Like there's so much more. What does that mean? Made it. What do you mean? Right. Make? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like what does yeah. that mean that you made? Like like yeah. life isn't over because you got X mark whatever. Like yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's like everything you do. If it's devoted to save it, if it's devoted to the divine, it's part of your life and it's part of your uh, accomplishments. But you don't even look at it as accomplishments because you're here to do service. You're here yep. to put on this show. And that is a very important thing. No doubt. Yeah, it's a very important thing. You're doing. Thank you for that. Thank you for that blessing. Yeah. And uh, Brian and I have had so many challenges getting this show to work right like just just like technical issues all these things and we just keep reminding ourselves that like the divine wants this show to happen no doubt you know so just keep going over the hurdles and keep pushing forward and just keep keep the needle moving and everything's gonna work out yeah well i'm I'm, I'm just take i'm still experiencing that with putting on a festival it's a very doubt very difficult arena and we have a lot of people we have a great staff but it's very very difficult and uh, you know i usually last in things between 10 and 12 years and uh this is kind of my uh you're at you're at 11 is this the swan song don't tell me this is the swan song well this would probably be because i have the most magnificent daughter uh Mm. one of the co-producers in fact two of my elder children were also producers of the festival, and they moved up to Bend, Oregon. And but my daughter, who's actually the youngest producer in the country of any festival, and brilliant, and uh, understands so much for her age. And she was all my chi- all my family have been brought up around the gurus their whole life. Mm-hmm. I go to India every year for the last. Uh, uh, 1980, every single it's year. Like 1980? I don't miss, I don't it's miss like 40 year. years. And wow. Yes, yeah, every single year. And uh, and then for the last 16 years, I've been taking uh, people with me to share my experience with them. 
Uh, somebody once said, hey, if you ever want to go to India, you go with Sridhar because there's not a door that's closed for him to come in. So we get into all the temples and ashrams and all the spiritual teachers welcome us and take very good that's care awesome. of us. When, well, that's over. awesome. So are you, okay, so let's say that you've, okay, so you've done Bhakti Fest since 2009. Obviously it's evolved a lot since then and you're going to hand it over to your daughter. But let's think, let's think back to from where it started to where it's gone you know, that transition, did you start the festival? Like, was it a one day thing at first? It was always a three day thing that you kind of evolved. Like how, how did it start and where has it evolved since? Can you give us a little bit of uh, insight on that? It started as a three day festival and now it's actually six days because the, uh, the the day, it's a four day festival full on. Okay. And actually, actually we used to go 24 hours. (laughs) <laughs> for like all 24 like bro, just around we the clock 24 hours for three days straight without stopping oh no way. like mantra and kirtan available at any hour whenever it was happening all night long oh my gosh the shakti must have been uh, out of this world you you were like you couldn't even walk on the ground wow you're floating yeah, yeah. and that's uh, like so, so net, then, you know, everybody said, okay, everyone's getting too burnt out with that one. <laughs> yeah, everyone's, too, everyone's been levitating for too long. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah get well, down to the ground. To, it, it takes a lot to maintain that kind of a schedule. Oh, no doubt. So we did, that, we did that for around three or four years, actually. And then, so now we have a Wednesday, which is the pre, uh, pre-festival day, which is an intensive uh, where one of the top yoga teachers in the world will give a four or five hour a uh, yoga class, very intensive. And then uh, we have a dinner. And then at night, we have uh, an opening night performance by, in this case, Radna Swami from uh, Mumbai and uh, the Hanuman Project uh, are going to play. And then the programs are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 7 in the morning to around midnight. That's so much fun. So much That's fun. so much fun. I checked the schedule. Like, I haven't been to the Bhakti Fest before. Like, I've heard about it. Um and I looked at the schedule, Same. and I'm, I'm coming. I'm gonna come up on a Friday, and I'm gonna stay all Saturday. And I am oh, excited. I'm, I'm excited it, to it's come. Really, it's really the most powerful experience in a festival mood anywhere in the world. I can tell you that. And uh, it's very blessed, and it's very graced. Um, and it's you know, there's no alcohol. There's no smoking. There's no. Uh, no, it is all vegetarian. You know, we have 15 of the best vegetarian food booths in the country. Um, but people say, why don't you have alcohol? And why don't you allow smoking? I said, well, if I wanted all that stuff, I can go down to the corner to the saloon. And I could get drunk and I can smoke, you know. Well, all you whatever. want. <laughs> and I can get laid every night. Huh? But who, oh, wants yeah. to go to, who, who wants to go to the, do these things? Right. On a regular why would I go to a festival to do the same thing I'm doing every day in my life? Right, right. Why don't I, yeah, yeah, and why I, don't love, I love the fact that I can bring, like I have a ni- nine-year-old. He's going to turn nine on Saturday. I have a nine-year-old, and I take him to yoga with me just because I'm right. like, either you're going to do chores, you're going to come to yoga with me. Like, this is yeah. part of my life. Like, you're going to come with me. And I can take him to that festival, which is awesome. Yeah. And, and it's like with, with your daughter and, and your family, like – your yeah. practice has affected them, you know? Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, for, for, um, since 1970 to 2004, we lived in Topanga Canyon, California, and we had a beautiful seven-acre ashram there called the Center for Spiritual Studies, and all the great teachers and gurus from India or Tibet, they used to come to California on their tour, and they would stay and stop at my place. And oh, wow. so we hosted everybody from Swami Muktananda, Yogi Bhajan, and many, many great teachers and swamis. And Amma, the famous hugging saint from India, she stayed, <laughs> there, for, say, say, she stayed there for 17 years. Whoa, that's so, a long time for one mushroom. Yeah. So we, uh, and then we left in 2004. Uh, for certain reasons, which I, I would tell the story, but then we came out here, uh, and that's how we got out to Joshua. To Joshua Tree. Nice. Yeah. So I noticed that um, 
the, the festival's not at Joshua Tree this year. Yeah. So, this, what's the so uh, we were, yeah, what, we were at the same place, the Joshua Tree Retreat Center, for 10 years. We did 22 festivals there. We had a home. We were ingrained in the community there. We were ingrained in everything. <clears throat> They want. They saw how successful our festival was, the retreat center. So they wanted to put on other events, right? Mm-hmm. So they started getting into these uh, heavy duty, you know, childish Gambino and these kind of people. <laughs> you know, festivals, yeah, people. music festivals, yeah. music Not festivals, conscious festivals hard, like that, yeah. Hard rock and, and the community didn't want that at all, you know. And, and yep. especially they did they did some illegal grading on the corner. The community complained about it, and the county of San Bernardino came down hard on them, and they revoked their overriding permits, and uh, they said to them they can't have any more festivals. Wow. Oh, gosh. So no, so no was, more at all? That was, that was last September. Okay. And wow. so this year we had, we had to make a move in May. <clears throat> Ideally, I should have just canceled May and not even done that festival, but in my heart I felt didn't that people's need for this festival, that was Shakti Fest in May. Right. People's need was so strong that people really needed to be there and they really needed to have a place to go because the world is in a very lousy condition. It's very fucked up. And and to have a place like this to go where I'm around like-minded people. Right. Raising the vibration. And I can be in a safe environment that I don't have, like, say, if I'm a family, I don't have to look over my shoulder that my my kids are getting looked at or something right. like that. Like, yep. like one girl came to work for us a while ago, and she said, you know, I go to Coachella, and I walk across the field in Coachella, and I'm groped like 10 times by the time I get across the thing. I said, well, yeah. you don't have to worry. You know, That's what alcohol does. I mean, I, I like to have a beer. I like to have a glass of wine. But I, I, I tend to do everything in moderation. I right. don't like to do anything in excess. And because if you do anything in excess, anything, drinking, smoking, eating, sex, whatever it is, mm-hmm. <coughs> it controls you. It, uh, it, it, you're the slave to that, you know? Yes. And uh, it's better to be, you, ha- you need to be in control and you need to dictate what you're doing, right. especially in this world today because there's so many outside influences. Everything is out. Everything is an outside influence. You know what I mean? We're if you allow it to be. We're bombarded 24 seconds. It's right? terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Open your I phone want to and boom. Yeah. You can't get away from it. So uh, that's where discernment comes. You know, people, when it comes to pleasures, people usually use very poor discrimination, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and their approach is often unintelligent and uh, like destructive. And in, yeah. and destructive for sure, you know. No, but no. we everyone goes for the moments moment pleasure, and we don't think of the result of no, what's going to happen. Not thinking about the consequences. Later. No, you know. Yeah. And I, understandably, you know, why would I think of that consequence? I want to just enjoy myself for that moment, and I don't care about the next day. So, right. But it does take a toll if you keep on going that way, and you will eventually have some, you know, not very good uh, uh, experiences from that. Yeah, for sure. I, I hear you on that. So, is the um, is the place where you did in May same place you're doing for no. festival this no. coming up? When no. is the? Can that, you tell us the date for this festival coming up? This festival is September 25th to the 30th. Okay, and it's now in, it's in a new location. Uh, it's, we took over a 56 acre golf course in the city of 29 Palms. Okay, yeah. And 56 really, acre golf course yeah i was wondering about yeah. that like i, I looked it I up on the map and i saw a golf course i'm like is <laughs> uh, yeah it's on the driving range <laughs> yeah well we're, we're built we're building now right now as we talk and uh, we're building three big yoga halls and three big workshop halls and two big stages and stuff. do you, you build know, them in like t- are they tents or like how does it like is it outdoor or indoor or both? Out, everything is everything is outdoor everything okay, is everything Okay. We build shade cloth. We have big, huge shade cloths covering the fields. It's got to be massive. That's got to be some be massive. Yeah, well, the yoga, hall, the yoga halls are like 6,000 feet, you know? Yeah. So I, we can put we can put 350 people in the yoga class. Wow. Which, you know, yeah. See, which, see if, if anyone listening, 
If, if you're listening to this, you want to go to an awesome festival, you need to check out BhaktiFest.com. Like, I looked at it myself, and I was like, I'm going. And I'm going. Yeah, And you're actually I'm going. <laughs> and, I, and I'm there. I'm, I'm bringing my son. So if you have kids, too, bring them. Like, like, like yeah, you said, right. no alcohol. No yeah. alcohol. Yeah. It's like it's family, great family, family friendly. Environment. Great family environment. It's yeah. very safe. And we have something for everybody. You know, we have a big kids land where we have – a whole program from like nine o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night, teaching music, teaching yoga, arts and crafts, you know, singing, uh, you know, uh, you know, preparing uh, good food. You know, it's it's it's, it's wonderful. Absolutely. And each we have a big, huge wellness sanctuary where we have specialty uh, teachers coming in to give a different kind of massages and. Uh, you know, Ayurvedic treatments and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And yeah, like I, I was looking, DJ Drez, Marty Nico's on the schedule. Yeah, um, Krishna Das, MC Yogi. Yeah. I mean, that's just a few of yeah. the headliners, you know. And this year we're having Mike Love, a fantastic reggae guy, is coming in from mm. uh, Hawaii. Uh, Parangi is also a oh, wonderful. Parangi is amazing. Yeah. 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 Have you seen Parangi before? Um, yeah, yeah, I have. And that's when I, I saw him a couple of times and I said, oh, you got to come out, you know, and this is good for these people also because they don't yeah. normally they don't normally perform in a crowd like this. Right. Different kind of crowd, different kind of energy. And um, we just had a we did an interview with DJ Taz Rashid uh, a few a few weeks ago. And he uh-huh. and he's been to your festival and performed and been there and uh, oh, yeah. it, it's just cool like that you know kind of we're all connected like in this circle and um, you know it's it's a small big world out there and that you're bringing in different acts um, kirtan yoga wellness all of it you know into one space for a you know six day thing is is super amazing and powerful um, like I said in the beginning I plan a one day thing locally um, with like we usually have about two thousand ish people. They come to our event for the one day thing and a giant field with tents and you know, all sorts of stuff, vendors, you get the whole yeah, thing. Wonderful. wonderful. But it's yeah. it's it's craziness, you know, it's madness. I can't imagine like, you know, when you were doing it in two thousand nine, I can't imagine like for those three days for the first festival they did, did you sit down anywhere for more than you know, forty seconds during those three days? <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're just running around the, crazy. Yeah, it's only the last uh, four or five years that everybody knows that I'm not going to be around on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm just going to hang out with all my, yep. all my bros. Yeah. Know, my, my, my guy friends and my, my lady friends who are all the teachers, because that's how I got to invite all these people because yep. I was, I was friends with all of them. Yep. You know? you take and this, I, and maintain I, those relationships. And I, yeah. And I helped get their careers started and nurtured their careers and curated them. We are, we are always, curating new acts and people know you know if they want to do anything in in, in the kirtan world or in the yoga world they they, they get their start at bhakti fest they because it's an acceleration you know you make a name for yourself when you come there you know, oh, i yeah, love sure. i love kirtan lately like I, I just that's something new that i've discovered in my practice especially krishna das and it's just like it's just some like deep like I, I just feel so good listening to Kirtan as well, and just very powerful. It's it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very I teach um, Shridhar. I teach a, a yoga with live music experience every Sunday, um, for like eighty to hundred people at a in our class, and uh, we have all different Kirtan acts that uh, play for us, and um, I just know the power of that in a in a larger group setting. I can't imagine with three fifty, you know, thousands of people in like uh, in your space but i know the power of that when everyone's raising their vibration right and everyone's saying a mantra or everyone's breathing together there's some incredible energy that can be created and it happens last, super fast last september uh, deepak chopra honored us to come and everybody said deepak chopra oh, wow. boom how much did that cost you i said he came for free uh, what said, wow. really yeah, he- yeah, because of our relationship, it goes back a long time. Are you friends with and, them? Uh, yeah, of yeah, course. Oh, awesome. Friends with all these people. Yeah. Everyone yeah. I it's talk the power to. Of invi- I'm friends, yeah. yeah, it's the power of invitation, you know? It's the power of invitation. Just like you're putting on something for service. And anybody out there that thinks like, oh, that Sridhar runs this yoga festival and he's making thousands and millions of, like, none of that is 
that's not how yeah. this stuff goes, man. That's not how right. it goes. Right. You know, I can tell you firsthand, it's not how it works. You know, this is not a big money making scene, and we don't do it for that. We can pay our bills and have some money for charity yep. left over afterwards. We're very happy. Yep, absolutely. And that's amazing that you have Deepak coming to your uh, festival this year. He's actually going to be here in South Florida in uh, in a month or so for a talk on his new book. And I may go see him at this place called Unity at the Bay yeah. down in Miami. Yeah. Definitely uh, go see him and uh, go out, go by afterwards to get your signed copy. Yeah, I, I saw him one time before. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, last year, it turned out to be, in, uh, I'm going to give you a little personal uh, note here. Oh, we, we love the personal. We, oh, yes. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're good on hey, hey, hey. Whenever you want to hang up on us, just tell us. Exactly. <laughs> Until then, we're going to keep talking. I'm the producer, <laughs> okay, and I got time, so, so uh, we're good. Last year, um, <laughs> January of last year, 2018, I was in India. I was at uh, – my guru has a very big uh, hospital there, and uh, I go for my annual checkup there. And while I was there, they discovered a uh, very serious uh, situation with my – uh, prostate and uh, oh, no. my, PSA, my PSA and uh, uh, what developed there is that I I came back and uh, it shot up very high and uh, turned out that I have uh, I had prostate cancer. Oh shit! So, uh, yeah, so uh, then started uh, a very serious treatment and uh, a study of mine that I had to get very deep into because there's not a lot of information for men. There's no support groups and. You have to really do a lot of this on your own. And um, then it turned out that one in seven men here in, in America have this, and 250,000 a year die still. Oh, my gosh. Uh, wow. So I approached it from a medical standpoint and an alternative standpoint. Uh, so I did, like, very serious uh, 18 supplements a day and uh, uh, acupuncture and chiropractic and uh, – Used all my alternative resources, massage, and CBD oil and THC oil, a very powerful formula, and 45 sessions of external beam radiation, where they shot me full of 15,000 rads of radiation every single day. Jeez. And it was like, holy shit. Wow. And what happened at that same time? It was one year ago. The when- Bhakti Fest was happening. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I was getting treated right up until the time that Bhakti Fest went on. And it was only because something happened with the machinery and they had to tell me, okay, we have to reconfigure the machinery so you're going to have four days off. And what were those four days? <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Friday, and Sunday. I already Friday. know what it was. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't know that, but I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, long story short, I I got a good clean bill of health last October, and I'm a cancer survivor, and I beat prostate. Congratulations. Congrats. You know, congrats. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that personal story. Um, yeah, it's, it's important because you know we're faced with many, many obstacles, many situations, health wise and otherwise, every single day. And it's yeah. how we react to them, you know? How do we deal with it, you know? Do we just curl up and say, okay, it's time for me to go and whatever? No, no, you fight everything out. You, you battle everything out, you know? You have to have the will to live and, 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 and give and, ser- and be of service. And, you know, I wake up every day, and right before I meditate, I bow down to the altar, and I say, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me another day to serve and to be here for, for everybody. Gosh, I, I, I love that. And just just like listening to your story and researching you, you know, I mean, this stuff's not easy. Like any, any of this stuff that you're doing is not easy. I mean, you, you're, no way. In, you're in prison and like, like, and then you have this festival and like just Woodstock. I mean, just your whole story. Like that's not an easy, easy story. And it's like, I feel like you just kind of roll with the punches. Like you just kind of let life do what it's doing and just, I mean, how, like, especially for the listener out there, when you have a challenge and you're kind of feeling hopeless, like where do you go mentally? Yeah, well, I take a step back. I take three very, very deep breaths. The thing is we always, there's action and reaction. 
Right. That's why nobody can get along with each other because you yeah. say one thing, I say something. Immediate else. reaction. I, yeah, I say something, you say something. He says something. She's everybody's battling it out with each other, and nobody's listening to each other. Just battling. Right. Exactly, and that's the most important thing in the in the couple dynamics, right? You know, we're always instead of the man, man just the man has the bigger ego, of course, and we have to worship the divine feminine. We have to bow down to the goddess and kiss their feet and say thank you, you know, thank you, whatever you, whatever it is, you know, because you know it's too it's too damaging and trying. To battle it out. Now, I didn't always think this way, and I must tell you that I had my my situation with 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 wives and relationships that didn't turn out too good. But I I learned from those, you know, and I try to become a better human being. That's yeah. so on point. Always learning, That's you know. So on point. Al- always learning, and that uh, all this is temporary, and it's a learning experience, you know. We Each have we have to, we have to forgive and forget. Others' faults and weaknesses. Mm, that's beautifully yes. said. Beautifully, beautifully said. said. Sridhar, what's your favorite part of putting on Bhakti Fest these days? Like this last one. Uh, this is the swan song. Like, what's your, what's been your favorite part? My favorite part is seeing everybody um, so happy and mm-hmm. joyful, and so contented, and dancing, and and just letting themselves go and and being happy. For that time frame, and then having some deep understanding from the festival and taking it back out with them into the world and sharing that with everybody that they meet and helping others on the path as well. Exactly. That's the whole key. That's where the community piece comes in. Like you're, you create the community, you know, and you, you invite all these people into a, a community. And when they go back out, they share the energy and the good vibrations and the things they've experienced with their like-minded friends that maybe couldn't come to the festival. And they say, well, next year, I'm not going to miss that. I want to feel that in person, not just from someone telling me or sharing a story. And then they bring a friend. You know how it goes. They bring a friend, and and you're just raising and raising uh, the vibration. You know, that's and amazing. You got you to gotta skip the, uh, the other stuff associated with it. You just got to go for the purity. Go for mm-hmm. the purity of the moment. Mm, Don't go yes. for the- Present. Don't be, go for the, the stuff. Don't go for the stuff. Yeah, be in the moment. You know, be in the moment. I have a, I have an old saying that I usually like to use. We come in this world with a breath, and we go out of this world with a breath, mm. and everything in between is details. Mm-hmm. So good, so good. Hey. Shridhar, Shridhar, I think you just dropped. I think you just dropped the mic. I, I think that I, was it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was ama- that, was, that was amazing. I know. I, I want you to be my guru. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to come see you. Yeah, you come be my see teacher. Me I'm, not, I'm not a guru. I, I, I'm a, maybe I'm a teacher or something like that. But I'm just a regular <laughs> person. And, uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, yeah, like regular you. person. But just like me doing the research on you and watching just like your talks. Like you, like I just feel like the humility. Like it, it is That's all it. about service work, and like you put on this festival, and like I'm, I'm looking at the festival, and I'm like, wow, like this is this is a big, you know, Huge it's all deal. all about love. Yeah, exactly. All I do, love. I do one workshop at the festival, which is the first day on Thursday, and it's for men only. And the title of the workshop is "Stop the Bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, when is this? I'm Thursday, coming. bro. You're not gonna make it. Oh, Thursday. Next next year. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, Shreda, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to connect with us out of your busy, busy schedule, especially two weeks out from the festival. Um I know when I'm doing my festival two weeks out, like my head is spinning crazy. So I'm near you have a, your team set in motion that's taking care of a lot of things on the ground. But uh, to take the time to do this at this time uh, is really amazing. So we are super grateful that you were uh, able to be here this evening to do that with us. So thank you so much. We really appreciate and it's that. It's a pleasure and an honor. And anytime you want to reach out, I'm always available. It doesn't make a difference if it's in the middle of the festival. 
Oh, you're so you're an awesome dude. Appreciate and I know you're not on social media, but will you take a selfie with Brian if he can find yes. you I'm at the festival? Find you. I'm gonna find you at the festival with my son and we're gonna we're gonna take a selfie. Come and hang out with me in the green room. That's where I'm hanging out. You know, I I got a couple of big security guys, but just tell them street are invited. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll tell them. So come in there and we'll have a drink. Get, get Brian awesome. from the Yogi Show on the list, Street Art. Get yeah. him on the we'll list. Have a coconut wa- we'll have a coconut water. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> coconut water. Yes. Oh on my on me. I'll get you coconut water. Man. For okay. sure. Well, we will make sure to link everything back in the show notes on the yogishow.com for all the details on Bhakti Fest that's coming up here uh, in about two weeks, September 25th. And uh, thank you for taking the time again. We're going to sign off for tonight. And uh, that'll be it. Thanks so much for taking the time, Shridhar. Yogi Brian, you're the man. Namaste, my friends. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Get to the Bhakti Fest, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Go check out thebhaktifest.com. Also, subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends. We really appreciate it. It would mean the world to us. The music on The Yogi Show is by DJ Taz Rashid. Show him some love. Check him out. We appreciate you. And you know it's all about that gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Namaste, everyone.